Hey guys, and welcome back to week 13. Happy New Year. Um, we are starting six weeks of a study on physics. Physics is the study of things in motion. Um, this first week, we are studying sound and sound waves and how um, the movement of molecules in an object um, can create sound waves, which then we hear. So, you could start out talking about sound waves if you have an illustration. Um, the handout I gave you has one picture and um, talk about if they, you know, ask questions if they know anything about how do we hear, how do sound waves travel, um, what has God gifted us with that takes movement of molecules, um, sends it to the nerves in our ears and helps us actually create sound. Um, it's a pretty cool process how that all happens. Our two experiments are pretty simple and so you'll have time to expound a little bit. Each of them are going to be done as a tutor demonstration and then the kids will each have a turn after you. So you kind of show them what to do and then they each get a turn and then you can discuss it. The first experiment spoon bell. Um, your supplies will be a spoon and about 30 inches of string. You then tie the spoon to the middle of the string. So it's just about halfway, it doesn't have to be exact. And then you're going to wrap it around your first fingers, just a time or two. Um, you want it to be about equal on both sides. You're gonna put your fingers in your ears and gently tap the spoon to the table and you can hear the vibration travel through the string to your ears. Then you're going to do it a little harder. Um, so on the outside you hear a you hear a donk, but as you're listening it actually you can hear the vibration. It sounds like a bell, um, like you've just hit a bell. So it's pretty cool. Um, and so you do it, have the kids do it, and then you want to talk about amplitude. Um, an amplitude is how high or how low sound waves are. And so when we hit it really soft, the sound waves are low and that's why it just is a very slight dome. But when we hit it harder, the sound waves are higher and it makes it louder. So amplitude is how high or low sound waves are, which then correlates to how loud or soft the sound we hear is. Um, and so again, you can expound on that as much as you want, um, but it creates a bell. The second one is our humming glass. And again, for all of these, you really want to emphasize the scientific method. So go back to that sheet, ask the questions under each thing. So the first one, um, you know, what is our purpose? What is our question? What are we looking for here? And um, research would be the information you give them or the information they can give you, a background information about sound, sound waves, so forth. Um, what are their hypotheses? You know, with the spoon, you can ask them before they hit it, what do you think is going to happen when you hit it really soft? What do you think is going to happen when you hit it really hard? Um, with the humming glass, you can, you know, what's going to happen when we create friction on this glass? Um, and then, of course, your materials, the procedure, and then bringing it all back together and saying, why did this happen? And what's our conclusion here? So for humming glass, your materials are the glass, like this, will be in your crate. Um, soap will be in your crate. And then a little thing of vinegar. Um, for our purposes here, I've already washed this glass, and so the first thing you want to do is wash it in the sink, and that's just to get any residue, any dirt, anything off the edge that would affect your experiment. Um, then you simply get your vinegar, you're going to dip your finger in it, and you're going to rub your finger along the edge of the glass. And you can hear it creates a very high-pitched sound um, and you can ask why is that what's happening when I'm just rubbing this if I use my finger without vinegar on it 
there's nothing. I'm doing the exact same thing, but you do not hear any noise. Why is that? Well, it's because the vinegar against the glass is creating friction. I barely touch it and it does it. Um, the friction is then vibrating, shaking the molecules of the glass, which then um, creates sound. It's vibration, just like the spoon vibrating creates the sound. And so with this one, the first one we talk about amplitude, with humming glass, you can then go on to talk about frequency. What happens if we spin faster? What happens if we spin a little slower? Does it change the frequency? The frequency would be how high or how low um, the sound, the pitch is. When you go faster, it's higher pitch. And when you go slower, it's a lower pitched. Um, and so you can play around with that. If you still have time, you could put water in this glass and see if that affects the vibration of the molecules. Um, and again, at the end, of course, you want to wrap it up with just the wonder of God's creation, how he made our ears to hear, how he made the, um, the whole idea of sound waves and how molecules hit actually create sound. The same, um, what are other things that we hear? We hear, you hear my voice right now. Why do you hear my voice? Because my air is vibrating the air um, between me and my phone and it's creating sound. Um, the, you can talk underwater. And does that affect how your sound is transmitted? How do whales hear underwater? How do animals tr communicate? Um, so all of that you can expound on even more. Have fun.